used to build collaborative business applications okay now which means an applications where different users or the number of users can collaborate with each other SharePoint provides many features or capabilities um, which are actually grouped in different categories. So let's first talk about those categories. On a high level, those categories are collaboration, the ECM, um, the web content management, the social computing search, BI means business intelligence, composites, hybrid mobile experience. So number one, what is collaboration? Um, SharePoint provides the ability to collaborate on different type of contents. Contents like the documents, which means we can store documents inside SharePoint and we can share those documents with different users. Remember, SharePoint is known as a document management system, although it, its functionalities or its capabilities are not limited to document management feature, but document management is one of the feature of SharePoint. So, um, uh, the ability to collaborate on different type of function, uh, content like document, um, which can be a web content, uh, which means a normal HTML type of page, um, the list items, which means we store our data inside the list so we can share that data with different users. We can collaborate based on the media contents which means we can store the audio and the video files in SharePoint and then we can share those content with the different users. Um, even uh, you, can, you can store drawings, drawings of the, visual, uh, of the visual especially. So you can store your visual drawings uh, inside the SharePoint and again, you can collaborate on those uh, drawings as well. So in SharePoint, you can set or you can define the behavior of collaboration, which means you can set whether users should also be able to work on content simultaneously or sequentially, okay? Um, which means on a one sing within a one single document, multiple users can work simultaneously. Uh, but definitely uh, there will be some issues. There may be some issues in some cases, uh, but the option is available. Or you can turn this behavior into sequential manner, which means they can collaborate on contents using the sequential behavior, okay? Um, to turn on this sequential behavior, usually what you do, uh, you use check-in, check-out type of functionalities of the libraries, uh, which means before start working on an item, every user or whoever wants to work on a document, he will or she will perform a check-in operation. So what, um, what uh, the, the document will, uh, by performing this check-in operation, the document will be locked. Okay, so this check-in, check-out functionality will be used uh, for, uh, for locking the operation or, uh, or simply unlocking the operation. So if you are locking the operation, uh, you are simply um, locking that particular document, so no other user will would be able to perform any kind of other operation on that particular document, okay, until or unless that document is not released from there. So we have these different kind of items which are available inside the SharePoint 
for the collaboration purposes. Okay, different document libraries, different list libraries, different kind of web content, different type of list item, the media content, the drawings, all these kind of uh, contents can be used to collaborate. SharePoint is known for this particular purpose a lot, which means enterprise content management, ECM. And the document management systems comes under this particular area of, e, of ECM, enterprise content management. Um, normally, the enterprise content management is a software technology um, that enables organizations to create, uh, let's say manage, publish, distribute, search, and even destroy digital content. Okay, so it covers the whole life cycle of any digital content from um, creation till the deletion of that particular uh, content. So SharePoint provides the enterprise content management functionalities. And uh, uh, in short, uh, the ECM is the feature known to storing and, and organizing data in, into an organization, okay? Uh, so while we, are create, uh, while we are using ECM, we are basically storing and then come, we are completely organizing uh, digital content in SharePoint or in any other uh, ECM product. By the way, there are different kind of ECM products available in the market, but SharePoint is the product which provide the ECM services. Uh, usually in organizations, um, we use databases to organize structured data. Uh, data like the data about the financial systems, data about the inventory systems, data about the employees. Um, so these kind of uh, these kind of data um, is uh, is is managed inside the structured databases. But these ECMs is best known to organize unstructured data. Okay, like the SharePoint. Um, which includes content like documents, the audio, the video files, all these kind of contents are managed very well inside these uh, enterprise content management systems. Okay, SharePoint contains many features, by the way, to support ECM functionalities. For instance, um, many different type of list and libraries to store content, let's say provide the versioning uh, capabilities, um, provides the content approvals, SharePoint use workflows, record management, um, document management features um, to process or access that content. Okay, and especially using like, let's say uh, features like site column, managed metadata to describe all that content. Okay, so under the ECM, under the document, uh, under uh, SharePoint, uh, in, uh, in, um, in, under the ECM uh, part, we will find many features of SharePoint. Okay, because I said that uh, SharePoint is best known for the document management system, or in other word, enterprise content management system. Okay, when I say enterprise content management, which means document management is a one part of enterprise content management. Other than document management, there can be uh, records management as well. For example, uh, you can define some of the logics or some of the rules. Uh, let's say if the documents are that much older, then those documents should move from your main library to your uh, to your let's say record center for the for the archival purpose okay so record management can be uh, can be uh, can be part of enterprise content management system so uh, we have sharepoint for the collaboration purpose we use sharepoint for the enterprise content management purpose there is another purpose of SharePoint and a very key component of the SharePoint is known as web content management. At one stage, Microsoft had a very specific 
uh, server for this particular task for the for the managing the uh, the content of the web okay it was known as the web content management server however uh, since uh, sharepoint 2007 microsoft merged the capabilities of that server into sharepoint server so um, let's talk about that uh, over the period of time that uh, sharepoint had been a very successful platform for document management um, and uh, this entire ECM played a very vital role in overall success of SharePoint. And by the way, HTML, which is used uh, for the web development, is just another kind of document as well. Okay, so using the uh, web content management features of SharePoint, organizations can take advantage um, of their existing investments. Um, in SharePoint to utilize it for their internet presence, which means um, why, 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 why get some other domains or why create or why use some other technologies to create your public facing site? Why not use and utilize the existing infrastructure of SharePoint to publish your public facing sites. The advantage in those cases will be that your users will be very familiar with the SharePoint environment, which means if they have been using ECM um, functionalities or the features, so the similar kind of features will be used in for the web content management. So there will be nothing new uh, for the users. Um, they will use uh, SharePoint web content management very similar to normal ECM functionalities. Okay, so all in all, basically SharePoint WCM features, which extends the capabilities of existing ECM, okay, and makes it even easier to create, manage, and deploy and analyze content distributed on for the anonymous users, which means for the for the internet, okay? So this is another functionality of SharePoint which can be used uh, for the internet as well. Sometimes people think that uh, probably SharePoint can be used only to manage uh, the content of uh, content on an intranet uh, level, but this is very false assumption actually. Uh, we can use SharePoint on intranet and we can use SharePoint for the internet as well. Okay, and if we want to manage our public facing sites, so we can create those sites within the SharePoint and we can simply publish those sites for the rest of the world. Uh, for example, in future, if there is a need to create a new HTML page or to publish any HTML page, so will you will not ask your IT guy or your developer to create a new HTML page for them rather your content creator or your content author they will simply use SharePoint and they will create a new page and they will be able to publish or publish that on internet so this is another kind of capability uh, which can be used in SharePoint Okay, then we have social computing. I'm sure um, everyone will be aware with the Facebook and the Twitter kind of things. Uh, basically, um, these applications almost uh, have changed the trend of working. Okay, and uh, not only in our personal lives, um, but in our day-to-day uh, -day working as well. Okay, um, and the organizations and the enterprises, um, they also need a very similar kind of features in their applications. If I want to share something with someone, so probably I think in terms of Facebook, okay, that probably I will write something and then people would be able uh, to comment on that. 
So these kind of applications provide these um, these days the social computing features. Okay, and SharePoint is no more exceptions. So we have the social and the collaboration features in SharePoint Server, which help users to connect um, and to let's say communicate with each other and find track and share con important content. Um, and information in very similar manner as we do in Facebook. Okay, so these kind of um, these kind of social computing capabilities are available inside SharePoint. Uh, like you can um, allow your users to create a very small sites for themselves. Uh, that site uh, is uh, normally known as the my site. Okay, and in one of the module, we will explore that how we can allow our users to create any um, any my site uh, in SharePoint. Okay, so all the all the social computing features are also part of the SharePoint. Then we have search capability in SharePoint. As I mentioned, that. If we have a lot of content and SharePoint is a um, is a product uh, which is used for the enterprise content management system. So you put every kind of content inside the SharePoint. Sometimes those are the PDF documents. Sometimes those are the Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint kind of documents. Sometimes that content is a video or the audio kind of files. So if there are there is a lot of content inside the SharePoint, then we need a capability to search that content. OK, so SharePoint provides a mechanism or a platform to perform searches in your uh, in SharePoint environment. By the way, I'm saying SharePoint environment. OK, but the boundaries of SharePoint search are not limited to SharePoint environment. We can search um, on file, uh, um, let's say uh, on, on file systems. Probably we have a very large file systems where uh, we have number of documents stored on operating systems and, the, and those folders are shared with the users. So what we want to do, we want to achieve that when, whenever someone try to search some content, so SharePoint should be able to search or try to locate that, that content, not only within the SharePoint environment, but probably outside, outside the SharePoint on file operating system or file servers, okay? Even we can um, go one more step uh, further. Um, what if you have a database? And you want your user to perform searches in those databases as well. Um, probably you have an Oracle database or SQL database or probably the SAP is there. And you really want them whenever they perform some, some search, then that search should be capable to retrieve some of the data or some of the records from those um, different repositories as well. So search is a very vast inside the SharePoint. That is why it is known as enterprise search in SharePoint, which means you can perform searches anywhere within the enterprise, within the uh, within your enterprise. OK, so SharePoint search is not limited to the area of SharePoint. Um, by the way, these days um, you will hear a lot about the cloud, uh, which means Office 365. When I say Office 365, that doesn't mean SharePoint. Okay, Office 365 is an umbrella, and under that umbrella, we have different kind of systems or the services available like the exchange service uh, like the crm sharepoint yammer um, Sky, skype these kind of different services are available under the umbrella of office 365 and these days what organizations are doing they are basically using office 365 on a cloud and they are using 
some of the SharePoint part inside the cloud and they are using some of the part on premises. Okay. Um, in those situations, even the search can be used to perform searches in cloud as well as on-prem content. Okay, so the, the scope of search is very vast. Okay, it's not limited to SharePoint environment only. Then we have another capability of SharePoint, which is known as business intelligence. These days, SharePoint is used as a front end for business intelligence purposes. Um, which means SharePoint allows user to, let's say, display charts, key performance indicator, different kind of dashboards. Um, um, let's say you can use another service of a SharePoint uh, known as performance point service, okay? Using the performance point service, you can create some very good dashboards, uh, business intelligence dashboards. Um, then you can use, let's say these days, power period, power view, uh, these kind of reports, um, and you can publish those reports um, on, a, on a SharePoint, okay? Because SharePoint ultimately becomes the portal of your organizations, okay? So, it, so the SharePoint um, sits in between and around this SharePoint, you have many different line of applications and those applications provide their outputs into the SharePoint and you can use those output um, to create dashboards and different kind of reports so that all the users would be able to access SharePoint to view all those business intelligence reports. Um, even you can use SQL Server reporting services. You can use, you can publish SQL Server reporting services um, inside the SharePoint. Okay, so there will be no use, no need to go to separately run those reports. Rather, there will be a one particular platform and that will be the SharePoint and using the SharePoint platform, uh, you'd be able uh, to access all these business intelligence features. Okay, so there, there are different kind of things that you can do inside using the SharePoint business intelligence feature. Remember, it becomes the front end of business intelligence dashboard in SharePoint or in your organizations. Then we have composites. Under the composites, we have so many things. We have workflows, um, we have business connectivity services to extract data from other databases. We have InfoPath form services uh, to create um, electronic forms uh, very easily. Um, then we have, let's say, Microsoft Access services, uh, once again, to create small apps for the user. These all comes under the umbrella of composites and the composites means you can create all these kind of applications or all these kind of things without writing a single line of code. If you need to create a workflow, there is no need to use Visual Studio or to write code inside the, uh, in, uh, inside the Visual Studio. You will simply use uh, a non-developer uh, uh, or non uh, or uh, a codeless based type of workflows. So uh, you are not supposed to be a, a developer in order to create a workflow. Similarly, for example, if you want to publish graphs on uh, uh, inside the SharePoint, then probably all you need uh, is a, a skills of Excel, okay? Um, you can simply create your charts in Excel and you can publish those graphs inside the, inside the SharePoint. So composites means many features of SharePoint where you can customize your SharePoint without writing a single piece of code. Okay, then 
we have hybrid. Um, now, uh, you understand that we have two, two kind of environments these, these days. On-premises environment, where we take care of each and everything of our organization on our own, which means all the servers, all the operating system kind of things. And then we have another kind of platform out there, which is known as cloud platforms. Okay, where we are no, not supposed to take care of servers and the operating systems and the patching kind of things. That's the responsibility of Microsoft or probably the AWS, where, wherever you create your, uh, or wherever you host your environment. Okay, so these days, by the way, this cloud thing is very popular and very famous. As I mentioned that Microsoft provides SharePoint online services under the umbrella of Office 365. Using this hybrid feature, what you can do, um, you can configure a relationship between on-premises SharePoint server and Office 365 cloud. Okay, which means, as I mentioned, that uh, you would be able to store some of the content in a cloud and you would be able to uh, to provide some of the services in your own environment on-prem environment remember one thing by the way um, the vision of microsoft is very clear and the vision is cloud first mobile first so whatever new things comes in SharePoint 2016, those all new features or functionalities will be available inside the cloud first. And at any later stage, when Microsoft decides that uh, probably now we should release these functionalities for on-prem uh, SharePoint. So every new functionality will be available in on-prem first. By the way, this Office, this version of um, uh, 2016 of SharePoint. Um, this was also extracted extracted from the cloud, okay? Which means it was extracted from the Office 365 version of SharePoint. Um, so that is why these days uh, organizations are using cloud as well as on-prem uh, SharePoint. Um, Although you have to be very careful when you are recommending cloud to your organization, because in case of cloud, in SharePoint, you still don't have all the functionalities which are available in on-prem SharePoint, on-premises SharePoint, okay? So let's say uh, in case of on-premises SharePoint, you can write customized solutions for SharePoint, which means you can ask a developer to create any custom solution uh, for a SharePoint. However, if the similar thing you want to use for um, cloud for Office 365, then the options are very limited. Although you can deploy uh, some of the code, but you will have to deploy that code in a very specific manner. Okay, you won't deploy that code same as you were supposed to deploy in case of SharePoint uh, 2013 or on-prem SharePoint 2016. Okay, you will have to follow a certain type of uh, type of code in order to deploy in cloud. So when you use on-prem SharePoint, you have all the luxuries okay but when you use cloud versions um, your options are limited in those cases however um, the integration between these two systems is very much very much possible and that is why these hybrid features uh, are available or that is known as the hybrid um, sharepoint these days uh, once again this hybrid nature is not only 
uh, applicable uh, inside SharePoint 2016 that is equally applicable for SharePoint 2013. I could I could hybrid I could use the hybrid deployments for SharePoint 2013 as well. Um, as I mentioned, that search is not limited. Uh, let's say to our SharePoint um, environment. Okay, we can perform searches um, outside the SharePoint as well. So probably, or uh, let's say if we create a hybrid SharePoint, which means the integration between the cloud and the on-prem SharePoint, then we can use, let's say SharePoint search known as hybrid federated or the, let's say hybrid cloud search functionality. That will enable your user to find um, content in cloud as well as in on-prem. So these kind of different features of SharePoint are available when we use hybrid. So you can you can use those features uh, seamlessly in for end users in cloud and the uh, and the on-prem. Any questions? Last thing is the mobile experience. As I mentioned that uh, the vision of Microsoft is the mobile first. So they create, um, they create all the things that which are uh, highly compatible with the mobile devices. Which means whatever you are doing on your laptop, you would be able to do on your, uh, on your let's say mobile or your, um, on your iPad or iPod on any, anything. So these are the core functionalities of SharePoint. Collaboration, sharing of information, uh, ECM, you can store content inside the SharePoint, any kind of content. Similarly, you can use the web content management uh, to, uh, for, the, for the management of your websites uh, uh, created inside the SharePoint. You can use the social computing feature. You can use the search functionality. You can make your um, yep, exactly. That is uh, also available in 2013, but there are some improvements in, in SharePoint 2016. While you will be viewing your site uh, on a device, you would be able to see that as a normal uh, mobile site or as a normal website. So these kind of options are available uh, or enhanced in 2016. So enhancements are there actually. Okay, composites means no development and create solution for SharePoint. Hybrid means combine the functionality of cloud and your on-prem SharePoint. Many features of on-prem would be able uh, to communicate with, uh, with the, with the uh, cloud uh, version of SharePoint, Office 365. And there are improvements in case of mobile um, technologies or the mobile devices. By the way, um, these um, functionalities or the capabilities are available inside the SharePoint um, since uh, 2010, 2007. I mean, lots of uh, functionalities were available in 2007 as well. Okay, so but there are enhancements and the new features were added uh, in in these new versions. Okay, uh, a very high level overview of uh, SharePoint's logical architecture. Um, whenever we deploy a SharePoint environment, we basically create a SharePoint farm, okay? We always create this farm first. Whenever we create a farm, there is a farm configuration database. And remember, uh, behind the scene, uh, SharePoint will always use SQL Server. We cannot use Oracle or MySQL or any other database with the SharePoint. So SQL Server is an integral part of a SharePoint. So number one, you will create a, a server farm. Um, we, will we will experience this thing in module five. Um, then there are service applications, as I mentioned, that uh, the role of service applications is to configure these services at one particular place and these services provide services or the functionalities to rest of the web applications in SharePoint. 
okay once the service applications are in place then normally we create web applications uh, remember that sharepoint is an application of asp.net okay which means uh, this is a platform which is written on top of asp.net so usually whenever we create um, any application in asp.net we create a web application and whenever we create a web application in sharepoint uh, behind the scene um, a site is created in ias a database is created in sql and that database is known as content database okay so every content whatever content you store like the documents or audio video whatever kind of document you store uh, inside the sharepoint that is stored in this particular content database okay so we can have multiple content databases uh, for a sharepoint environment however you will have only one con farm configuration database inside any sharepoint farm inside the content database inside the web applications uh, we can have multiple site collections and inside each site collections we can have multiple sites uh, the sites and the site collections are the places where normal end user interact with the SharePoint. The site is normal, uh, a site like uh, we use in case of um, in case of online uh, share uh, uh, in case of uh, our normal websites. Okay, like Facebook is a site. So in in SharePoint, there can be multiple kind of site. Probably you can create a site for your marketing department, a separate site for IT department another site for your help desk uh, services so you can create as many sites as you want okay so it's a just high level overview of, of this particular environment we will go into the detail in one of the uh, chapters any question about this logical um, environment it's very similar to previous versions like if you have experienced your point 2013 or 2010 uh, it had uh, those version had very similar kind of logical architecture not much change in SharePoint 2016 okay a very important part of SharePoint is known as information architecture once again we have a very specific um topic or module for th this particular um for this particular topic okay um we use information architecture just to classify that how our information will be stored and how that will be retrieved um using sharepoint so in order to create any information architecture we use different kind of items of sharepoint like the site columns Normally, when we create our list of libraries, we define columns. It's very similar to uh, any database. Like in any database, when we create any table, we define columns and the data type of those columns. So similarly, in SharePoint, when we create any list or library, which is very similar to the concept of database tables, we define columns as well. Okay, uh, but uh, there, there is another type which is known as site column, which means uh, a kind of global column, and we can associate this column with any um, with any list or of uh, list or libraries in SharePoint. Uh, we will explore this term sets. We can define the term sets basically using the manage metadata service in SharePoint in order to create the, uh, the information architecture. We can use content type for this purpose. We can use the document sets, location-based met metadata, which means, for example, if we have multiple folders inside a document library, and we want whenever something is stored any particular folder, then the metadata has to be filled automatically okay so in those case we can use the location based metadata okay so remember the whole purpose of this information architecture is to define the metadata so whenever you are saving something you have enough information about the content to retrieve it or to use it inside the sharepoint very effectively okay so once again uh, we will take a complete 
look on this information architecture in next module by the way let's talk about some of the new features available in sharepoint any questions so far okay 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 uh, distribute these uh, new features let's say in uh, um, in sharepoint 2013 and we can categorize those new features let's say some of the features available for the um, as a as a new architectural features some of the features are available for search feature hybrid features and the mobile uh, features let's talk about the architectural feature now, one of the major change in SharePoint 2016 is a new type of topology. When I say new type of topology, which means we can install SharePoint in a very different manner, okay? Although the previous kind of installation, which normally I say the legacy installation or the legacy topology is already or that is intact in SharePoint 2016. Okay, we can install it. We can install SharePoint 2016 as we used to install in case of 2013 or the 2010. That is still there, but we can install SharePoint in a new manner, and that is known as min role. M I N role. Okay, that is known as min role. Okay, Microsoft, by the way, um, has implemented some change directly in SharePoint topologies. Um, and the purpose of those changes is to enhance the speed and the stability um, to simplify SharePoint deployments. And to achieve those objectives, Microsoft implemented this min role in 2016. What basically this min role does? In this min role, if we use min role, so what the SharePoint does, um, instead of starting services manually on servers, as we used to do before, Microsoft has hard coded which service runs on which server. Okay, which means now I can make a server or can or I can assign a very specific role to a server. We have now six different kind of roles. I can make a server in SharePoint or I can assign a, a server a role known as front end. Okay, which means while installing, I can say that this will be the my front end server which means user will hit the server whenever they want to use any functionality of the SharePoint. Then SharePoint will not allow me to deploy or to use this particular server for any other use. Okay, similarly, we can, we can uh, assign a very specific role known as distributed cache sorry about my typos okay which means only the distributed cache will, uh, services will work on that particular server similarly we can assign a very specific role of search okay we can make it on application server okay similarly if for example, I want to use multiple services on a one single server because if I am making it a front end, I am simply uh, saying that this server will only function as a front end or as a distributed server cache or as a search. Okay, um, so what if I want to implement multiple services on a server, then I can go for a custom role. 
if you create a server or if you assign a custom role to any server, which means you can install or you can um, use any kind of SharePoint services on that particular server. Okay, so these are the very specific roles which can be created using this new topology in SharePoint, which is known as min role topology. So when you will be installing SharePoint, you will have two options. Okay, um, either you can go with the min role or you can go with the single server farm. Okay, so for example, um, let's say um, you are not, um, you don't want to use these specific roles, so you will add custom servers or the custom roles uh, in your in your topology. So this is one of the major change in SharePoint 2016. And remember, we have once again both the options. If you want to go with the min role, so you can add some of the server for specific min roles, and you can go with the custom roles on the custom um, roles, you can assign or you can, um, you can deploy any kind of services. Okay, so this is the first new feature of SharePoint 2016. Um, Another enhancement uh, which is made in SharePoint 2016, um, SharePoint 2016 now uh, can now use the resilient file system, which is the feature of uh, Windows Server 2012 and 2016. Uh, resilient file uh, system, uh, which is known as better uh, file system as compared to NTFS. So you can, so SharePoint now supports the resilient file system as well. So which means if you are, if you are trying to install SharePoint on the resilient file system, so SharePoint 2016 uh, will accept that installation. It will not uh, raise any kind of complaints. Okay. Okay. Um, one more thing is known as SMTP encryption. An enha enhancement in SharePoint 2016. In previous versions in 2013 and 2010, uh, whenever you configure outgoing email, it was always sent unencrypted un on port two, uh, on port 25, okay? In SharePoint 2016, now the outgoing email page allow us to use TLS, transport layer um, services, connection to encrypt, as well as we can configure and we'll be able to configure the SMTP port, um, SMTP server port, to a non-default port, which means now I can use other ports, which means other than 25, port 25, which was not possible in 2013. So this SMTP encryption is another new feature, uh, which is available in SharePoint 2016. Okay, these are the main core feature at the architectural level, the main role, resilient file system support, and the encryption, okay? If we talk about search, um, now SharePoint search supports up to 500 million items. Okay, this is once again an enhancement in SharePoint 2016. The previous one, I guess, was somewhere around uh, 
20 million or 2 million, something like that was the case. However, now this limit has been increased quite a lot. In search, especially if you are using cloud or you are using the hybrid features of SharePoint, then you can use hybrid federated search or you can use cloud search service application. Okay, you can go uh, with either option. In case you want to use uh, the search for the cloud as well as uh, for, um, for on-prem SharePoint. In case of hybrid SharePoint, a uh, hybrid federated search, the index is created for on-prem separately and for the crowd separately, okay? So you have two different indexes and there is no replication between these two indexes, which means whenever we create a search service, uh, there is a index file behind the scene, which basically uh, create the index, which basically populates the index. That's the job of the crawler, okay? We have another kind of search, which is known as cloud search service application. What it does, it basically pushes all the on-prem index to Office 365, which means in this case, in the second case, all the indexes resides at cloud. Okay, so nothing will be stored in your on-prem SharePoint. So these are the search features which are available when you use hybrid features. Okay, so these are some enhancement in search. Okay, um, as I said that hybrid is not specific to SharePoint 2016. We, can, we could make or we could build the hybrid environment in SharePoint 2013 as well. But remember 2016 is coming out of SharePoint online, okay, or, or Office 365 SharePoint, whereas the, the SharePoint 2013 was a separate build altogether. So there are some new features as well, uh, um, or the enhancements or the improvements in case of hybrid features. Um, let's say one of the hybrid enhancement is that, let's say um, when we created hybrid um, environment with the SharePoint 2013, in SharePoint 2013 hybrid mode, when users, let's say, followed a site on-prem, they had the shortcuts in their on-prem my sites. For example, if I follow two, three different sites, so there will be shortcuts for those sites in in my my sites location. Okay. For example. I was also the user of a cloud, which means there was a hybrid. So whenever I followed a site inside the SharePoint online, it was showed up in the sites section of Office 365. There is a site section available in Office 365, okay? Now what in 2016 is enhanced or improved is that whether I follow a side on-prem or I follow a side in cloud. All the shortcuts will be available in the Office 365 SharePoint section. Okay, which means now 
when I am following different kind of sites, I will be required to go on a one single place, whether I am following um, any on-prem site or I am following any, uh, let's say, uh, online site. So no need to move on two separate places in those cases. So this is another kind of uh, enhancement which is provided uh, in, um, in hybrid features. Lot of changes or the enhancements are made for uh, OneDrive for business. By the way, it was introduced in SharePoint 2013 and we could use uh, we could use OneDrive for business uh, for with the SharePoint 2013. Uh, but uh, it is refined further in uh, SharePoint 2016 um, with the ability to synchronize local files with Office 365. And this uh, this uh, hybrid OneDrive is available just like uh, uh, just like another SharePoint document library. Um, there are so many different kind of controls available on OneDrive for business um, to accomplish different kind of tasks for update, for synchronize, for upload. These, these kind of things are available um, as a icons on, on OneDrive for business. So there are a lot of enhancements uh, in OneDrive for businesses. Any one of you uh, have ever experienced this one drive of, of this for business? Any prior ex experience with that? Sorry, just taking me. This is Kathy. Uh, OneDrive for business for, for Boeing is we've, we've enabled it because we have my site still on our um, environment and we've mm -hmm. enabled a small area for the OneDrive for business, but not, we don't get much space. Okay. So the user must be able to synchronize their local files with the OneDrives and probably they would be able to access those files from anywhere. Yep. Yeah. So the, so lots of uh, new features are added or the improved in, in this version of, um, of OneDrive. Uh, mobile features, um, I would say the uh, users uh, have the option to switch to full website view or the same experience uh, for the same experience um, they uh, normally get uh, on their PC. So there will be an option to switch on a full website view. So normally uh, when um, when applications or the websites are developed or targeted for the mobile devices, so those are not very similar uh, to the sites which are available uh, for the PCs or the, for, the, for the laptops. Okay, so you have an option uh, when, when you access any, any site uh, from your mobile. So you would be able to select either you want to see it as a mobile version or you want to uh, see it as a full website uh, version on your mobile. So this is the kind of enhancement uh, which is available um, uh, for, the for the mobile features. Okay, once again, the if we talk about some new content management features, um, now I'm sure that uh, um, you will be uh, familiarized with this content management terminologies, which means document or any kind of thing, any kind of stuff is known as uh, the content. So some enhancements are made um, in case of uh, uh, new site content management features. Uh, for example, the, the, the recycle bin um, the team site and the recycle bin links for OneDrive for businesses are added to navigation menu. On a left side, the menu in the menus, the recycle bin and and the and the team sites of the links are available over there for the better navigation purposes. Okay, similarly, um, 
the pinning side, which means you can pin your site and these sites will be available uh, for the follow-ups. Um, you can use a site uh, folders view, which means uh, a link to the uh, site folder view and my document has been added to the nav uh, to the navigation menu um, in OneDrive for business. Okay, so you can quickly access to site and the documents within uh, within the within the simply using your uh, one business uh, one drive for business so these are very minor uh, graphical interfaces changing uh, changes which are used uh, for the for the better uh, for better navigation or um, better uh, GUI as a GUI features On a content as a content management features, um, now there is a possibility for the video and the image previews. Okay, uh, now uh, it enables the users to identify the content just by uh, move, moving your mouse on a video on the on the on the images, and there will be the previews will be available for that. Large file support is possible. Okay, which means you can upload files larger than 2 GB data size okay although uh, you should be very careful about that uh, you should not allow your users to upload uh, 5 GB or the 10 GB uh, kind of content on a SharePoint databases or a SharePoint system um, okay so however the support is available and you can control these kind of attributes or these kind of uh, behavior on an application level, uh, on a, on each on each web application level, and we will see while we will create any web application that how we can control that how um, that how, how large a file uh, can be uploaded on a SharePoint uh, platform. This is the kind of format uh, which is supported uh, in SharePoint and uh, 2016, the ODF doc document, the open document format, the XML base, which is a XML based format uh, used quite a lot these days. So which is completely supported. Um, we could share the folders, uh, but there was some enhancements, enhancements were made in sharing of those folders. Nothing, nothing very special, by the way. Okay, as I mentioned that Microsoft uses a term um, enterprise content management. Okay, when we say ECM, um, when we say that uh, SharePoint has a, have capabilities of uh, as a working as a ECM system, which means enterprise content management systems. So, <clears throat> sorry, there are many, um, some of the new features were introduced and some of the feature enhanced in this particular area. One thing that we can implement the document deletion policies, um, which can which can include deleting cloud documents. For example, we can specify that now after this much period of time, uh, delete documents from let's say OneDrive for business locations. Okay, now this is possible, and these kind of things are considered under the under compliance features of SharePoint. Um, we can place, uh, let's say, or um, I could say we can prevent documents from being deleted. We can place the in place hold policies on documents. Okay, so which means the document is freezed and no one would be able to delete that particular document. Such kind of policies can be placed on document. A very new feature introduced in SharePoint is known as fast site collection creation. Okay. 
So here we were using, let's say some policies for, let's say, um, for you placing in on um, in hold policies. Okay. Um, secondly, we were using, for example, we can write policies for deletion policies for cloud, which means um, Skype, um, OneDrive, okay? Okay, one, one, one more thing, which is very useful by the way, is known as, call it, not first, fast site collection creation. Okay, uh, I'm sure that we know how to create a site collection. But this is a new kind of feature, which is provided in 2016 SharePoint, which is known as fast site collection creation. Um, what it does basically, let's say in previous versions, whenever there was a need to create a new site, uh, we either use PowerShell or the, or the GUI from the central administration to create a site collection. The result was that uh, Usually when the Microsoft, when the SharePoint says that um, it won't take um, that much long, longer, then uh, you should be careful that uh, it will take a long time, okay? So the reason was, there was a lot of interaction between SharePoint and database, SharePoint and database. What Microsoft had done, have done in this uh, 2016 by, uh, by using this fight, uh, fast site collections. Now we can configure an option in SharePoint known as the master site um, in SharePoint, master site template. And whenever we issue a site collection creation command in 2016, so what the SharePoint does, it pass that command to database and all the processing is performed at the database level. There is no further interaction in SharePoint and database, in SharePoint and database. So that way our site collections are, crea are created in a much faster manner, okay? So we will experience uh, this fast site collection in one of the module while we will be creating uh, the site collections in SharePoint. So this is absolutely a new feature available uh, in SharePoint. Um, normally in enterprise uh, content management, we store our, we store different kind of files in our systems in SharePoint. Uh, let's say um, I worked on a project and uh, in that project, there was a requirement to migrate data from operating system to uh, into SharePoint system, okay. But unfortunately, all the files which were available in operating systems were containing so many different special characters in it. And those special characters were not possible to, to import or to migrate inside SharePoint libraries, okay. In 2016, this has changed. Now you can have larger file names with special characters, which means the M percent and the bracket sign, all these kind of different symbols are possible while you will be creating folders and files in SharePoint. Okay, so this is another something new especially when you are using, for example, GUIDs or these kind of IDs to name your documents. So SharePoint will not raise any concern or it, it will not create any kind of problems for you. And it will accept all those naming conventions with all those 
special characters in SharePoint. Um, another something new, which is, I don't know why they haven't mentioned yet, known as DLP, which is known as data loss protection. It was available in Office 365, but now it is available in SharePoint 2016 as well. What basically it does, uh, now the SharePoint server allows us to find over 51 different information types like the credit card numbers, the social security numbers, the bank account number, the passport numbers, and so on. What this DLP does, data, um, data loss protection systems, what it does, it doesn't only find any report, the sensitive inform about the sensitive information in the whole SharePoint form, it can also block it so other users can't access it, which means there is a pattern of social security number. There is a pattern of bank account number. There is a pattern of uh, passport number or the credit card number, okay? So I can use SharePoint to figure out in which documents are we using such kind of numbers, such kind of patterns. So SharePoint can generate a report for us and we can apply some kind of policies for that purpose, okay? This was the feature, it was available in online, in, share, in, in Office 365, but now this is available in, in, in on-prem SharePoint as well, which is known as DLP, uh, Data Loss Protection, okay? We create different kind of sites for that, uh, e-discovery site and, uh, and the protection policy um, kind of sites, some new templates are available uh, in order to accomplish that particular purpose. Okay, search services required uh, for for uh, for this functionality as well. So multiple configurations are required uh, to implement um, this DLP or the data loss protection uh, policies in SharePoint 2016. So if you have so much content available inside the inside your um, your SharePoint and you really want to perform audit. Okay, and you, uh, that audit should gener generate a report where such kind of information is available. So you can use that DLP or the data loss protection feature of SharePoint 2016. So you, we, we can now use policies where we can hold the documents or we can define the deletion policies for the cloud. We can use the fast site, create, uh, fast site collection creation. We can use the data loss protection. All these are the different kind of new features available in, in, in SharePoint 2016. Okay, some new, um, some business intelligence features are enhanced, but I will uh, give you a bad news about um, uh, business intelligence features in a way. Uh, yes, that is right after this slide. Okay, so some new composite features are available, uh, which means uh, we can use uh, apps for Office, uh, which support, uh, and, and the apps for Office uh, have been added to integrate data from external sources. Now, um, this word apps might be new for you. Um, apps was another kind of development option that was included in SharePoint 2013. Okay, before that we had, um, let's say sandbox solutions and uh, we had uh, farm solutions. So apps uh, was something new, it was added in 2013. Uh, we could use or we can use Microsoft Access, okay, to create um, apps, okay, and th that's the very easiest way to create apps. So there was another option to create apps for office support, okay? So now what they have done, um, they have added a new feature in those apps 
to integrate uh, from external resources, which means uh, we, we can call an external web service and we can retrieve data from those sources as well using uh, simple apps for Office. Some, ex some upgrades or some enhancements are made uh, for the for the uh, for the access apps like um, I can simply deploy an app in my in my cloud or in offices or uh, in in uh, let's say on-prem SharePoint and then after some time I can get a copy from the production to make further changes in that okay it was not possible before now I can simply deploy it and after some time whenever I feel there there is a need to make changes uh, in those um, in, in that particular app so rather than relying on my stored version okay I can get a direct version uh, or I can extract a latest version from the uh, from my SharePoint um, SharePoint uh, uh, environment we can download we can download our excess data uh, in excel which means now we can simply uh, extract all the data in excel and we can perform any kind of uh, any kind of uh, analysis we want to um, in excel so these are the few some new features because as we know we use uh, we use access application access service applications uh, inside the composite features of sharepoint which means no development by the way uh, which means you could be, you could create or you could create or you can create some some small application of access and you can upload those applications uh, in Microsoft uh, uh, whether it's a, it's an online on-prem environment okay no code quick applications so so we can do all these kind of things with the with the Microsoft uh, or composite features of SharePoint Okay, use of the apps for office and the and the access web apps actually okay uh, let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll be back and i will show some of the things in uh, in sharepoint okay thank you
Okay, Vincent. Hope everything remain remain good. Okay. Uh, let me show you. Let's say some of the things. Just give me a minute. Let me run my. Uh, let me run my. Okay, before show, uh, showing it, um, let me continue on the slide and then I will show it once. Now the deprecated features in SharePoint. Number one, there is no SharePoint foundation in SharePoint 2016, okay? Uh, until SharePoint 2013, we had a server part and we had a, a foundation part and, and, and everything was everything was built on top of SharePoint foundations. There were some, um, some free features were available inside the SharePoint foundation and there was no license of SharePoint foundation, but that luxury is gone, okay? Uh, we will have to acquire either the um, uh, on-prem standard SharePoint license or the SharePoint um, enterprise server license, number one. We cannot install standalone server now, okay? Which means 